Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Mr. Cabbage Heads at Garden, the deluxe version, and thanks to Luda Creations for sending me a review copy of this one. So this is a solitaire card game, very quick to play. I imagine the entire playthrough here will take like 8 to 10 minutes with the way I edit. Very briskly paced. And besides Solo, it also has a 1v1 competitive mode, but let's forget all about that. You know, we're not going to cover that aspect. And this is a very simple, straightforward game, as you'll see in the play. So instead of doing a separate review video, I'm just going to have a mini review at the end of the playthrough. So anytime you want to skip to that, just use the chapters, the timestamps, and you can head right over and hear my thoughts. But here's how the game works. You've got three B tokens in your supply. You've got three on the B hive, and you have these three on holiday cards. And you're going to take your deck of 45 vegetable cards and put 15 on top of each of these. And then you're going to stack them one on top of the other. So you have an on holiday card after every 15 vegetable cards. And you're also going to randomly find four neighbor cards. There are a whole bunch of them if you get the deluxe set. So I'll just grab these four. And each one has very, very quirky art. And they're all uh, cabbage or carrot people or radish people or something. My son was very mystified when I got him to play this one with me. And each of them has a rule for how they will rob your garden and just mess around with you whenever you go away on holiday. But we'll get into them in a moment. How the actual core gameplay works is you flip up three cards. And each card has a vegetable type and a picture. You have the number of victory points the card is worth as long as it's orthogonally adjacent to other cards of the same types. So you need at least two turnips together to score eight points per turnip card. You also have here the number of this vegetable in the entire deck. So this one is pretty rare, only three total. And you have the vegetable number and the number of neighbor tokens. And what do those last two things mean? Well, the player picks one of the vegetables actually plant in the garden. I'll show you that in a second. Let's say that I picked the turnip. And then I compare the vegetable values of the two remaining cards. In this case, this bean card has a higher value. And I use the neighbor token value of this card. That's how many neighbor tokens I'm going to draw. And to build that supply of neighbor tokens, you take the six tokens for each of the four neighbors you picked, and you just mix them all together and turn them all on the green side face up. So going back to the previous example, if these two cards were left after I planted the one vegetable, and this one has a higher value, I would draw one token. And whichever neighbor or neighbors I draw, the tokens go right on their cards. And when I go on holiday after going through 15 cards, whichever neighbor has the majority of tokens is the one whose effect will activate and they'll generally steal a vegetable from your garden, although some have other effects. But if you're lucky enough to have two or more vegetables be tied for the most tokens, like here, Lord Carrot Body and the Right Honorable Palm Frit Esquire, they both have two. So here they would squabble with each other and nobody would come and mess with your garden. Bonus. And then all the tokens go back into the supply for the next on home phase. Oh, one more thing I forgot to say. If you take the vegetable on the right, you get another bee from the hive into your supply. If you take the vegetable on the left, a bee goes from your supply into the hive. That's why I have them placed like I do. And if you take the middle vegetable, neither one moves. And the key mechanical implication of that is that if all the bees are on one side, you cannot pick a card that would require moving more to that side. So I couldn't pick the turnip right now because I have nothing in my supply to go over to the hive, whereas I could pick a bean and open up my options for next time. Now, in terms of actually planting, you have sort of an imaginary set of three rows and each one can have up to six vegetables. So kind of like six columns, so a three by six grid, basically. And you can place vegetables anywhere. But remember, vegetables will not score unless they're adjacent orthogonally to at least one other vegetable of their type. And the three by six grid is not locked in until you make it so. So like I could put down this first bean card and that could end up being the right side of my grid or the left. And you can just kind of place things wherever you like until you you've placed enough that you have six columns, for example, and you can't really fit anything else in there. Now, once you've gone through the entire deck and resolved the last on holiday, you're going to score the vegetables that are adjacent, like I said. And additionally, you get bonus points, awards of merit for getting certain configurations, so like the four corners having four of the same type of vegetable in your corners, or the avenue having columns of the same vegetable type on the left and the right. Each of these has a victory point bonus. You've got the promenade that has kind of pairs going up, down, up, or down down, up, down. You've got five of the same type in your garden, having all the bees at the end of the game in your supply. Uh, mix plots. This one's worth a ton of points if you have three different vegetable types in each row. And finally, the bounty is one row with six different types all in that row. And you just score that all up, plus the vegetables that were adjacent. 
And the beautiful Eudora Brassica will then judge your garden and you get to see how your score compares. A funny story, I taught this game to my eight-year-old. He played before I actually did. He played the first game with my copy and he got 130 points. He got a blue ribbon. I have never replicated that success. Didn't even know what he was doing and he just kind of stumbled into it. So good job, Harrison. But <laughs> let's see how I do and get into a solo play. And then again, I'll finish up with a mini review. So I could tell you what my neighbors do, but honestly, I don't really care until one of them emerges as the clear front runner. So we've got a rutabaga on the left, beans in the middle, radish on the right. Rutabaga is worth the least victory points, radish the most, but there's the fewest copies, but still four is not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the radish that does move a bee from the hive into my supply. And for now, it literally doesn't matter because everything is relative. So sure, there's my radish. Good job, buddy. And then the beans have the higher value, but it doesn't matter because they both have a one neighbor token value. So we're going to draw. It's going on Leticia Colwart. And let's see, she's a more complicated one. If a second Leticia token is revealed, a neighbor tile not used previously in the game is randomly chosen. It's placed on top of her tile, temporarily replacing her ability with theirs. That neighbor will visit the garden if Leticia's tokens are the most drawn. And at the end of the round, that neighbor tile is removed from the game and Leticia regains her ability for the next round. So <laughs> even more so, we don't have to worry about what do they do yet because we literally don't know. And these two cards are discarded. We go to the next one. Peppers, pumpkins, and radishes. So huh, I definitely want another radish because that's worth a lot of victory points since I already have one, but that is going to put me in a bit of a precarious B situation, but I'm doing it anyway. And there are a couple of obvious placements to do with your first pair. You can see the avenue is three of a kind going down in columns. And then the promenade wants a pair horizontally, then a pair in the middle, then a pair in the other corner. Now, with there only being four radishes in the entire game, I'm going to put them together, but I'm probably going to consider this my bottom or top, and then I can put two easier to get pairs in the corners here, maybe also do those columns down to get both of those bonus points. And all right, Pepper is the winner, so just one token again. And wow, it is Leticia again, so let's see who she actually is. Horace Savoy Brassica. You'll always remove one vegetable, the one with the highest vegetable number from the type that your garden plot has the most of. Ooh, so if I have like a bunch of radishes, he's going to take them. Oh, that's not so nice. So maybe I want to try to use some cards to draw more tokens to get him to not be the majority holder. All right, we got another rutabaga, a turnip and a carrot. And you can look at the discard pile. So remember, we have seen one rutabaga, which means there's only going to be four more in the deck. There's only three turnips total and there's nine carrots. Those are very common. So you know what? I think I will get the carrot. Then the rutabaga will be the highest. I'll draw two tokens, hopefully uh, override that person. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Then I pull off the last B. Never mind. Never mind. And there's only three turnips, ah, but I guess it's OK. I'm going to pick the turnip and that will leave my bees the same. And that way the rutabaga will have the higher value and I'll draw two tokens in a moment. Now with only three turnips, the chance of me doing one of those three columns with it is basically nil. So I'm just going to kind of put it in the middle and not worry much about it. And my two tokens, come on, somebody else. OK, we've got the carrot boy and the radish family. Lovely. So we're hoping we'll draw another token of one of them and just have no neighbor visit. We have two more sets before we're on holiday. Lettuce, pumpkin, beans. Nothing I've had before. Although both beans and pumpkins have shown up once. So I'm kind of leaning toward the lettuce just to even out my bees a bit. And then that would let me draw three tokens, which seems like it probably would be good. I guess picking lettuce or pumpkins would let the beans go off for the three tokens. But with pumpkins haven't been gone yet, I think lettuce is good for many reasons. Now with five lettuces in the game, I think they are feasible to be one of my like three columns. So let's put one up here. We can put another one there and then one, two, and theoretically get all those points. We're hoping. And the beans are gonna fire off three tokens. Come on. And we got another radish, so they're tied. Stay there, stay there. Oh no, her again. Oh, and radishes again. It's a three, three tie, which means it's all gonna come down to the last cards. Rutabaga, no beans, no pepper. Now, ooh. And I've thrown away two rutabagas, two beans, and one pepper. That means there's four other peppers left and only three left of rutabaga. Really not very many beans left. It looks like no matter what, I'm going to draw two tokens. So yeah, let's go for the safer bet with more cards left in the deck. Although that is messing up my bees again. And with four more peppers somewhere, can this be my other column? I guess so. Or at least minimum, I can get a pair and a pair to do the little like pair, pair, pair thing. All right, in the moment of truth, two more tokens. I hope it's like her or Carrot Boy here. Okay, that's a good start. That's a good start. Come on. No! Oh, that is not great. So remember, he's going to take the highest value vegetable of the type I have the most of. Then he's going away and it'll switch back to being her again. And all of these go back in the supply face down. 
So she has popped in and fiendishly stolen one of my radishes. I guess V71 has the higher value. Darn. But that's okay. That's okay. There's still a few more of them in the deck. I can get it back. Carrot. Carrot. Pumpkin. I have not gone for any of those. But I've also only passed on one carrot, and they are more common. So... Uh, let's go ahead and get uh, this one, I guess, to get my bees a bit more even. And then we're going to draw one token in a second. And remember, there are a ton of points to be had if I have three different vegetables in each row. So let's put carrot up here and try to keep things even after that. Or maybe like here to set it off from the turnip. And the one token is our radish people. I should probably see what they do since they almost won the Furwig Radishers. They will remove the vegetable card with the highest vegetable number from the next set of three cards that are drawn and revealed. The player plants one of the two remaining vegetables for free and reveals neighbor tokens according to the neighbor number of the other. I guess uh, so if they're like the last neighbor to do things, it doesn't affect me at all. That's really not that terrible because they don't take one from my garden itself. All right, beans, radishes. Yes, radishes. Okay, I definitely need those. Although I'm sad to give up the pepper, but I need the radish. That's not going to affect my bees at all. Now let's go ahead and replant the one that was stolen. And we're at one token because 15 is higher than two. And okay, it's that one. Tied for now, but maybe not for long. A lettuce, a salsify, and a pumpkin. Well, I have lettuce, so I'm not even going to look. Let's definitely take it. And let's start by getting the pear, pear, pear thing. And then if I have time, I can try to do the down column as well. And 40 is higher than 38, so one token. Ooh, the radishers are winning. I don't mind that. Here we go again. Pepper, need that. Radish, uh, and uh, oh gosh, that's not great. Gonna run out of peppers pretty soon here. So even though the radish is worth more victory points, I definitely need at least one more pepper. And what's it gonna do to my tokens? If I take this one, the 31 will win for two. If I take this one, the 76 will win for two. So it's gonna be two no matter what. Um, I guess in a pinch, I'd rather have the bees over here because I get bonus victory points if they're all here at the end, rather than have them over here in the hive. So I'll take this pepper. And like I said, I'm gonna finish off that formation. So we've got some points earned already there. And we'll do two tokens. Whoa, more radishers, and there she is. Yeah, it seems like the radishes are going to win this. A carrot? I can use that. A pepper? I probably need that. And a salsify. Yeah, I'm going to go for the pepper. Not even going to really look because I assume more carrots will come, but this is a little bit better. And I think if I'm very lucky, there might be one more pepper in the deck, and I can get that little column thing I'm going for. And what's happening token-wise? Oh my gosh, I'm letting three tokens come out into the wild. This might mess things up. Well, let's see. Boom. No, I don't think so. Radishers are the clear victor. Oh my gosh, five out of six. How did that happen? So again, the next time I draw vegetables, they're just going to take the highest one away. Hopefully it is not something I desperately need. But my garden is not affected this round, so that's fine with me. All right, I'm going to plant five more cards. Here we go with the first set. Beans, no thank you. Lettuce, yes. And root, awesome, awesome. Only one that I want. That was perfect. Not going to mess with my bees. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, no, no. That's the highest value one. Radishers. So, huh. <laughs> okay. Well, these are both terrible, but uh, <laughs> I just went through the discard pile. This is the last bean, so I guess I'll get the rutabaga because it has at least a possibility of scoring. And, oh, man, this might also totally mess up my three of a kind per row. Well, let's put it here, I guess, and then, like, I can let a pepper go in there. Maybe. I think I'm going to maybe give up on <laughs> the columns thing. All right, and that means I get two tokens, thanks to the beans. And it's the carrot guy and her. All right, come on, come on. Okay, carrots, rutabaga, carrots, ha huh, ha. Huh. So I think this is literally the last rutabaga in the game. Definitely going to grab that. And yeah, like I said, I think I might just give up on the possibility of lettuce being in my future and do it like that, I guess. And then both carrots say one token. And it's radishers. Okay, so we are having a three-way tie right now. Let's keep that going. Turnip, salsify, lettuce. Okay. So I do have a turnip, and if I don't get this one, it might never score. It's worth eight victory points, so gotta do that, even though the lettuce would be good as well. And I might still be able to do the thing with three different vegetables in each row. So let's put the turnip there, I guess. And the lettuce wins with 35, drawn one token. And oh, the carrot guy. So he has a slight lead. He says, we'll take the vegetable with the highest number adjacent to a carrot. Mm. And it's actually somewhat annoying because that would mess up my shape with the uh, three pairs alternating. So I could either try to draw more tokens to make his ability not go off or like put something with a higher value than 76 next to this carrot. 
Well, we'll see what the cards give us options for. Lettuce, I like that. Rutabaga, I could use that. And a carrot. Well, the lettuce is definitely the best choice for me score-wise. So I can put it here to keep it scoring, and that'll give me three types in that row, three types in that row. And then I can put a card here, and we'll see what the neighbors want to do. Speaking of them, two tokens. Okay, come on, come on. Radishers, I like them because they'll do nothing. Yes, yes, Radishers, come on, win it. This is excellent because even if the carrot guy gets one more, he'll just tie with them. So for my final placement, I'm feeling like I'm pretty much in the money. And ooh, this could not have been better. This could not have been better because I can get this turnip. Yes, that'll bring a B over. And look at this, I can put it right there to score. That'll be my third type in that row, golden. Now, the only negative is this higher carrot lets me draw two tokens. Come on, don't do like a double carrot. Don't do a double carrot guy. That's fine. I don't even know what you do. Okay, tie. No neighbor comes. They just fight it out. And let's get to scoring. So everything is adjacent to cards of its type except the carrot, so they won't score at all. We've got 15 from our lettuces, 5 each times 3. 24 from our turnips, that's 39. 14 from our radishes, 53. 10 from our rutabagas, 63. And 12 from our peppers, 75. Not a bad start. And then let's see. We do not have the four corners all the same. We could not do the avenue. We didn't finish either of those columns. But we do have the promenade for 14. One, two, three pairs of different types. One, two, three. There they are. So that brings us to 89. We do not have five of a kind. We don't have all six Bs. But we do have the mixed plot. Three different types per row. So that's 30 more. So 89 goes up to 119. And then we certainly don't have six different vegetables in a single row, so not getting the bounty. So 119 is our score. We get the red ribbon and a hearty handshake. Darn it, Harrison, you beat me again. <laughs> 11 point shy. But that was Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden. And hang out for my mini review. Not going to do a full five and five, but hang out if you want to hear my thoughts. So first, a positive thing to mention for the game, and that is how darn quick it is to play. You just shuffle up the cards, put them with the on holiday cards, draw three at a time, and the entire thing can take 10 minutes, maybe 15 or 20, if you really think hard about it. But definitely a very quick game, light and easy to get to the table and play a few rounds of. Another aspect I think works decently well is the B management, because sometimes it'll lock you into certain choices. Although quite honestly, in playing this a whole bunch, I've pretty much never been locked into all the Bs on one side or another. So it hasn't really affected the game that much. So maybe it's not as interesting as it seems, but at least it adds some additional consideration to whether you take the right, left or middle card. Now, something I'm definitely more mixed on are the neighbors. I like that there's a big variety of them, although it's a little bit annoying to flip them over and like read this tiny text about them. Though in fairness, as you saw in my play, you really only have to like flip up and look at them once they come into play and seem to have a majority. Like I never knew what she did and who cares? But here's the thing that I'm really not sure I like about them from a strategic standpoint. The fact that drawing more or fewer tokens doesn't really mean that your situation is going to get any better means that the potentially interesting choice of which vegetable you take because of a one, two or three value getting added in tokens isn't as interesting a choice as I would have hoped because you don't really know if drawing two tokens or three or one is actually going to help you. The one time that it's definitely good is when you have like a lot of tokens on somebody you definitely don't want to go up. Off, then you know you might want a two or a three. But besides that, I find that this whole like one, two, three choice is kind of a non choice and not really a factor in my strategy. So it almost feels like extra work for no real benefit. I almost wish that it worked differently and the two or the three meant how many tokens you drew and then you got to pick one of them so you could strategically try to go towards certain neighbors or try to make them tie with each other. And that way, certain cards would be more or less attractive, but it's not the way they went and it just works okay. But here's my full on con with the game. I think this is a big misstep. These awards of merit are a mess, like a total, total mess. <laughs> and to show you what I mean, compare the four corners, which force you to have one of the same type in four different corners, which means they will almost definitely not score, at least most of them, because there just aren't that many vegetables in the game to get an additional pair next to each of these. And it's only worth 12 points. What? The thing that won't score your vegetables and takes a lot of work is worth 12 points? Compare that to the avenue, three of a kind here, three of a kind here, in some ways easier to pull off, and all three of these will score on both sides, and it's worth 14 points? This seems like there's something a little bit wrong here. 
And then a similar thing, a more extreme example. The mixed plot, three different types of vegetables in each row. That is kind of hard to get, but that is 30 points. Whereas the bounty, six different types of vegetables in the same row, which again means that there is almost no chance that many of those vegetables are scoring by having another vegetable next to them. That's only worth 12, what? And the big thing is that as you saw in my playthrough, certain ones go together, like the mixed plot and the promenade are not mutually exclusive. The promenade and the mixed plot and the avenue are not mutually exclusive. So it is always in your best interest if you want to get the highest score to go for those three specifically. Those are the key to victory, which means my garden's going to look basically the same every time. And that's not fun. <laughs> so what I really wish they had done is better balance fees, or ideally, this would have been great, but too late. I wish that they had like done 10 or 15 of these and randomly dealt them to the player at the beginning of each game. Like you had three or four to go for to really give the game some variety because right now the actual placement of the vegetables is kind of a snore because I can do the exact same thing every time. I'm going to do the exact same thing every time. I would be a dummy not to. So again, this isn't a full five and five. This is just a mini review. But if you like quick playing card games, if you like a little solo fun or competitive, I haven't really tried that, but it might be OK with some really quirky, fun art, with some variety in the neighbors, with some interesting choices of which card you take when this one might fit the bill. But I do think there are some missteps here that could have made the gameplay that much more intense and exciting and engaging as it is. It's just OK for me. All right, thanks for watching this quick video, everyone. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.